continue here with an example, another example for a basic hydraulic system. We're going to look at an emptying reservoir, and let's say that this is a large reservoir. What do we mean by that? It means that if I look at the pressure here, and I think about this being a large reservoir, that height is not going to change in such a way that the pressure here, and I'm going to call that P sub R, it would change significantly. So I can treat it almost as a pressure source on one side here due to the height. I'm going to treat gauge pressures here so this is going to empty into atmosphere but because I have atmosphere again on top of this and I'm ignoring that looking at gauge pressures right I don't have to worry about this source here and then there is going to be exiting fluid here and I might be interested in that what is that flow going out into atmosphere and we're going to have a long pipe here and let's think about what's going on in this pipe here there's some flow q sub p and right there's two things that can happen along this pipe pipeline let's assume that it's a rigid pipeline so we have uh, kinetic energy storage so we're going to have some fluid inertia but there's also losses right in terms of friction so we need some you know some resistive effects in there and that's one of the things that we talked about with fluid systems is that we need to check the Reynolds number on this so we could have a different constitutive behavior for the pressure drop due to resistive effects based on what the Reynolds number is right so uh, how, how would we go about modeling the system do a simple word bond graph you have you know reservoir and because we know that the inertia and the resistance have to have the same flow variable and in this case right power is coming in from the reservoir this is going to be a, a source of pressure it's going to be kinetic energy storage resistive effects and then we could say that uh, it, it, it empties into atmosphere. If we wanted to, if we if we if we're not going to include that source on there, we can just eliminate this bond. But we could go ahead and leave it there, and um, I'll show you uh, how you could deal with it if it's if it's uh, gauge pressures. Uh, so you can see that they all have the same flow. So the pressures around here have to sum. Remember the sum of the pressures have to equal to zero. And remember that that's the unsteady Bernoulli equation there. So what do we have? We have the uh, pressure at the reservoir uh, minus the pressure due to the inertia which I'm going to go ahead and just write that as gamma dot. We know that that's, that's the inertial pressure. Um, remember gamma is the fluid momentum. Remember the rate relation, you could have just started by saying the rate relation for that pipe is is uh, the, the sum of pressures, um, but but we're going to find that that comes from writing this relationship and including the inertial pressure in there, and then we're going to subtract here the P here due to losses, okay, and that has to sum to zero, right? If we had included the atmospheric pressure, or if we wanted to keep this as a some other pressure, reference pressure, we could add that tr pressure in here and, and then uh, subtract it. I mean, in, in other words, it would be included within this pressure here, but then we could also show it explicitly there. But here, we're just indicating gauge pressure. So now, we get a nice simple first order equation, which says that gamma dot is what minus P sub L plus. Remember, this is an input, so we know what that is. We now need to come up with relationships that would help us model P sub L. And how do we model P sub L? Well, there's two ways, right? Laminar case says that P sub L is just some constant resistance times the flow through the pipe. And to be explicit, that's the, that's the uh, fluid momentum in the pipe, right? And remember, gamma P 
is equal to i sub p times q sub p, we assume that we know that that ip is what, remember for a pipe, it's, it's the density of the fluid, the length of the pipe divided by the area of the pipe, okay? This case works for the laminar case. And then you know what R sub L is, right? For a basic laminar flow, cell flow. If it's turbulent, then we need some other coefficient. And I'm just going to say R sub T times, and remember it becomes a nonlinear relationship. Uh, that's the product of the flows, but one of these we take the absolute value. This way we get a sign. In other words, we get right an asymmetric function the way we like it. And remember QP then we can find as a function of gamma sub P over I sub P. When we take the QP, insert it into your P sub L, into here you get a nice first order differential equation. Only in the case of a purely laminar case, and I'm sorry this is for turbulent, would, would this be uh, easily solvable. Otherwise if it's turbulent you have to basically find what this coefficient is. It could be a function of friction factor and so on. So you can see a very simple problem in the case of fluids, but because of the complexity of modeling the fluid flow in some cases where you have turbulence, it could be involved including lookup tables and so on. Uh, and here's the word bond graph. Now before we go, I wanted to show you an alternative way to look at that. I pulled this example out of a uh, classical undergraduate fluid mechanics text and you can see a very similar problem uh, we have right the pipe with a large reservoir problem and you see the way this was tackled here again it is it is the Bernoulli equation unsteady flow because you're and and, and this is an example in applying the unsteady Bernoulli equation because you can see this is exactly the equation I showed you before Certain terms are thrown out at point one, and then you follow a streamline. And remember, this term here gives you that, that this is effectively that gamma dot term. All the typical assumptions, as you often see in uh, these nicely organized fluid mechanics books. And I just want to show you at the end of the day, as you, as you apply that unsteady Bernoulli equation, you get a slightly different formulation. Okay, I want to actually back it up a little bit so you can see. No, what has been assumed here, this is assumed to be a frictionless flow, right? Whereas we assume that we had friction in the pipe, this is assumed frictionless flow in that pipe, which may not be a good assumption, but uh, it gets you started. And note what happens, though, because of the application of the unsteady Bernoulli equation, you uh, ha have uh, um, retained the dynamic pressure term. right so that's one term that we did not insert within our equation as you work through this note what you are able to find down here is an equation very similar to the one that we derived except um, the terms look, look, look pretty much the same you, you do have to change the quantity you know we, we focused on uh, you know, gamma equals I times Q for the pipe, and uh, here we have the velocity. But if you think about it, that if I multiply by area, right, of the pipe, then I have QP here, but then I have to divide by area. If I also then multiply both sides by rho, And you can see what I've created here is IP. So what I have collectively in this term now, when you study this, is essentially IP times QP, because this is the area P. And that's gamma. I took the derivative of it, and that's gamma dot. Okay. Uh, and this term here is what? It, that is the pressure of the reservoir. And this term here is the dynamic pressure, which we have not included in our previous uh, formulation of this problem. But what's missing here is is the pressure the pressure drop due to friction in the pipe. And so anyway, I wanted you to see uh, how you are able to derive the same type of equation for straight from Bernoulli, but we're taking a more systems approach 
and putting the system together using these basic model components, which is consistent with this kind of conventional classical approach.